Hello everyone, today I would like to share the literature review on spatial temporal complexive sensing and internet traffic metrics. It is a very old paper that was published in 2012, but it is a very, very valuable paper and they did some pioneering work in uh, spatial temporal data modeling for network data. Now, let's begin with the Literature review. Now, the literature review will be divided into three parts. The first part is the background, and then we will come into the methodology, and at last, we will have a look on the experimental study. And it should be noticed that the this study is a very uh, strict study, and they do a lot of work to validate their model. So, the experimental study is also uh, very valuable, and I can learn a lot from this paper. And let's begin with the background. The motivation of this paper is to reliably measure the traffic metrics for large networks. And what but what is the traffic metrics? And in this paper they note they noted that the traffic metrics are the negative metrics that describes values between source and destination. And in view of transportation you can regard the Traffic metrics as an OD matrix. And the challenges to uh, achieve this motivation is that the OD flow or the entries in the traffic metrics are not directly observable, but instead we only can estimate them through link low maximums. Intuitively, the OD is not, uh, we, we cannot directly detect them, but instead we can use the uh, sensors uh, located at the road, uh, at the road link to find what exactly, how much is the flow uh, move along this link and along that link. So uh, you use some of them and you can get a, a number for uh, OD flow. This is a simple example. And the maximums are limited in larger scale network data collection. That's really uh, uh, this very uh, ubiquitous feed, uh, problem because we cannot install the sensors at each link of a road network due to the expensive installment expense. And at last, it is very obvious that the missing value or enabling in data collection will be a problem because of there must be some uh, mistake during tra data transfer or any other external factors. And this paper uh, proposed sparsely regularized metrics factorization to uh, deal with the challenges. And they point out they represent the first spatial temporal model of traffic metrics and they achieved the idea of compressive sensing in traffic metrics. And they are also very honest and point out that their method will not work on unstructured data. Now let's begin. Let's have a close look in their methodology. And the research the research a uh, problem is the traffic metrics and the traditional setting on traffic metrics uh, is that this example this is a traffic metrics at t0 and they can and it can describe the od flow at a time step t0 and when you and this is the what this is one traffic metrics if you stack the traffic metrics along the temporal dimension, you will get a three-dimensional array, or you can also say it is a tensor that the, it can store the data in in each location and at each time interval in this structure. But in this paper, they do not uh, stack the traffic metrics along time dimensional. They they don't want to regard the the multiple traffic metrics as a three-way uh, tensor. Instead, they just uh, they just manipulate on these traffic traffic metrics to get a larger matrix, in which the row is the it, it, uh, the the row 
the entries of each row is the is the certain entry at a certain time step, which means that this is the temporal dimension, and each OD pair is uh, moved into the into the row into the into the row. So each row means uh, each row can represent the time the evolution of the flow at this for this OD pair, and they can. But and in my view, by by regarded uh, multiple square traffic matrices as a larger matrix, it's very it will be convenient for algebraic er 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 manipulation for complexive sensing problem. And and the basic idea of of this method is that. They want to uh in they want to ensure this equation. That that mean which, which means that the traffic matrix influence involves the to that by the backs x from lean load maximums. This is the x which records the OD flow at each time step for each OD pair. And this is the maximum matrix. You, uh, uh, and in this paper, they regard it as a linear operator. So you can you can uh, imagine that this is a this is a sensor on the OD flow, and also you can imagine that this is the another by by the OD flow matrix multiply multiply with this matrix, which will map this OD flow into another space. And in this space is the ring row space where where entries are the ring row maximums. So this and so we have an equation here to equation here to solve. Um, but but naturally the 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 OD flow the OD flow is is much larger. The number of o, the number of OD is is larger than the uh, the observed link flow, so we cannot get a unique solution of this equation. So this may this that is where the complex sensing method introduced. As you can see, the problem is that there may not be enough information to an an an, an ambiguously determine x. So they, 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 the paper uh, claim this problem is the un, under constraint linear inverse problems. And by but if the x is uh, has low low rank uh, structure, that will be another case. And in that and if the x is is low rank, then we will probably get a, a unique solution. And the basic idea for complexive sensing is that if we have a if we have a if if we have a, a original signal and up which is the x here, the we we uh, we will uh, consider the vector case in this uh, in in this. Uh, PowerPoint because the vector case is the basic formulation of complex complex compressive sensing and it will be more easy to understand by regard regard the original signal as a vector. And after the after the original signal uh, input into a linear system, they can get a measurement of the original signal. And this is the this linear system is actually uh, the this matrix you you may imagine, and this measure in this in this measurement the the, the entries number the number of entries uh, is much less than the num the number of original signal. So so usually the the most important uh, application of complexive sensing is to uh, to complex the image into a into a a uh, much smaller signal and then transform the signal with much higher efficiency. 
and then they, they and in this way we can uh, save the data transferred the, the, the say we can reduce the cost for data transfer tra transformation transferring and after we get the trans the uh, measurements we we want we want to reconstruct it from the measurement to get original signal that's what the MRI you reduce uh, because after you do MRI you you have a very large picture there there are many pixels so if we transform this imaging to to uh, to uh, any any others there will be a high cost so by doing the complexity sensing, we can instead transform these measurements to another, and uh, they, when others get their measurements, they can reconstruct the, the original signal from the measurements by themselves. And but but there are some strict conditions for various solution in complexity sensing, uh, as pointed out in this paper. At first. The matrix elements are drawn from Gaussian light distribution, and the matrix is exactly row rank. The matrix may is actually the original signal. We regard it as a vector here, but in this in this study, they regard original signal as a matrix. So they point out that if we want to directly apply uh, complexity sensing on the on the Data reconstruction problem: the matrix elements should be drawn from Gaussian line distribution, and the matrix is exactly row length. And there's another very uh, strict condition is that there should be some certain technical conditions for measurement constraint. That's to say, the conditions there are some conditions for this matrix, and this is the RIP conditions. Just like this, this is the this is what the measurement matrix should obey. And um, in my in my view, this this inequality function means that the measurement matrix are approximately orthogonal, because you if you if you, if you uh, uh, think about the extreme case where c equals to zero, which means that a times zero. The L L two norm of A times zero should be equal to the L two norm of uh, L two norm of uh, the original signal. So so the A should be orthogonal in in this case. But unluckily, the real traffic matrix elements are non-negative and often expect a higher skill distribution, where the largest and smallest element elements are often differ in size by several orders of magnitude. So that actually the traffic matrix violate all of the three conditions. So in order to uh, for the idea of complexive sensing, this paper uh, proposed another solution. Propose another solution, and they uh, begin with a sparsely recognized XVD. And in this in this uh, optimization problem, the this uh, hand write hand written form of A is the uh, measurement measurement operator. You can regard it as the measurement matrix in the in the last case, and and the original signal can be divided or can be decomposed by some uh, SVD uh, SVD was um, tandic, and we can regard and by do some additional manipulation, we can get two matrix. And then, if if we uh, if we uh, suppose that the x is row length, and we solve this problem, we can probably get a, a L and R, and which will will be uh, reconstruct x in a in a good in, in uh, perfectly. And they use alternate alternating least procedure to 
uh, through this optimization problem. And this this method means that if we want to optimize L, we will fix the R and do some gradient detection me method on L, and 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 in and and later we will fix the L and do some gradient detection on R, just iter just iteratively to uh, replicate this uh, procedure. And they they before they uh, truly uh, propose their final solution, they first uh, suggest some other solutions, which is which will be used for com comparison in an imp empirical study. The first is the rolling approximation algorithms, which is uh, also uh, the which uh, and the. That what they what the method they propose is also a kind of low rank approximation algorithms, and they point out that this kind of uh, algorithms focus on global structure. The global structure means means that the original signal is a low rank signal, and the first uh, solution is the baseline approximation, and. In in this problem, they re, they suggest that the original signal can be regarded as the mean of the old signal, at with the mean uh, uh, around the current and at the mean around the row, which means that the uh, this the whole the whole signal can be divided into three parts. That is the element wise mean, current wise mean, and row wise mean. And that's what and. And after and just to solve this problem, we can get three part, and and we we will re recover the original signal from this three part. And there are some other methods they will they will they, they point out the S S R S V D, which is the fixed solution, and then and they also have a non-negative matrix factorization, which means that we decompose the matrix into two sub matrices and this these two sub matrices are non negative and they also point out there are some local interpolation algorithms one of the uh, example they use is the k nearest neighborhood also uh, k and n method they point out this method the, the target of this paper that this method is the local structure which means that we focus on the similarity between two rows. So how they decide the similarity matrix for the KKM method because because the as you can see the the matrix they they treat the the, the row of the matrix is just a, an order location or the origin and destination. They, they don't, so the order of row makes no sense. So they only focus on temporal dimension. That that means that how each how each OD flow is uh, is how much the OD flow of one row is similar to the other along the temporal dimension. And they just uh, just use some very Basic uh, method for from K N method. They use the dot pro, dot pro dot for calculating the uh, similar similarity, which is uh, which is considering the temporal evolution of each O D pair, and then they will estimate the missing value using the average. That's that's mean which means that they for for each entry they use the the top k code the top k uh closing closing blow to interpret the missing value and 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 at last we will have a look on the proposed solution they named it as a spatial temporal complexity sensing the major difference between the this method is that they actually act some uh, addicts to uh, factors 
which is access to regularizer regular regularizers. It, the T is the temporal regularizers, which means that the matrix of the matrix is close to each other. If if these two matrix are happen, uh, the, the the time of these matrix are close. For example, the adjacent points in time are similar. Then if this if, if this if this is T0 and this is T1, if they are close to each other, that the result will be very that the entries will be close at, at, at the same way. So they, in this way they can exploit the temporal similarity. And for the spatial uh, for the spatial uh, consideration, they use uh, another regularization matrix. And actually, we cannot directly up get the get the spatial get the max, spatial matrix X. Instead, they do some another procedure. First, they they with some with the original data source which has some missing values here. They do some max line baseline approximation to get uh, the first approximation of the original signal, which and they recover some the missing value by baseline approximation, which is mentioned before. And then for each road, they can find k nearest road, k nearest road. And then they will do linear regression with the the k nearest road for the for this target road, and will get the get the weight. This weight is can be regarded as a, a correlation factor of each road. So after 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 finding this, they can find that the low i the similarity between low i and and j1 can be used uh, wk w1 wj1 as as a, a correlation factor. So in this way, they can find the entry. They can Determine the entries of the spatial matrix, and there's some other trick that this paper point out that they scale parameter to avoid overshadowing during optimization because because the multiplication of this this it may be, maybe the scale of the of the result is very different or or so they do some uh, normalization kind of. Um, Manipulation and to take a step further, they combine the global and local methods because in their study they found that in the case of small amount of missing data, the KN will be better, but for a large amount of missing data, the the proposed method will be better. So they want to combine these two methods to uh, focus to get the global and local feature in in a one method. And what they did is that for this matrix if if there's if the there are missing values in uh, before or after this time step we we, we can we cannot we, we, we th that then we will directly use the uh, Recovery result from SIMF, but if you have this method, if for this entries, if you you do have the if the there the, the the data before or after this data point it, it can be up can it is uh, is is observed, then we will uh, use KN to help uh, boost the recovery performance. What they did is that they find temporal relation use approximation from ISMF. They also find uh, this vector, so uh, linear regression, and then use this vector to interpret with the observed values to get the final uh, estimation result. Uh, now let's come to the data set, come to the 
come to empirical study and they use four state data, four kinds of data set. Uh, the size is, uh, I think, I suggest is 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 not very really large because at that time, two thousand twelve, the the computational uh, development is not as good as uh, what uh, is not as good as what it uh, nowadays. And they use a normalized mean absolute error to. Uh, Compare the performance of these methods. The first, the first kind, the first method is the missing value recovery, and they tr they consider the scenario where data losses rate vary from uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.998. And in this in this experiment, they they observed that the hybrid methods are better than individual one. And the performance of KN shrink quickly as data losses becomes heavier. And also, they point out that a smaller number of rows allows a lower length approximation to fit the data vector because the because the number of rows is not it has because the major uh, correlation comes from the temporal dimension so the number of rows should should be spe become smaller the recovered performance is naturally will naturally will become better and they also do some sensitive study so and they find out that the, the hybrid method is the most insensitive no, no matter the how they choose the rank r and the, the K neighbors, the performance is very really stable. And then they also uh, suggest three uh, specific loss uh, index. The X, the X index means that they select X percent rows and then select current with a probability P and the data and the lost data will come from the intersection of the selected rows and currents. And for row length loss, they just remove the set of rows randomly. And for the current rank loss, it is is they remove a set of currents randomly. And this is the uh, multiple loss loss index, and this is the method. They we can also say we can also uh, observe that the hybrid method uh, presents the lowest uh, low, lowest uh, error. And they also uh, put down the computational time and the. The most interesting thing in this uh, experiment is that they find that, that the computational time is a quadratic function of rank. Is as you can see, the quadratic line fixed the computational time uh, perfectly, and they also uh, take a step further with some additional applications. And the first is the tomography. They suggest that they they want to infer traffic metrics from from linear measurements, which means that the data is one hundred percent lost. Which means that the that the, they 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 will uh, reconstruct the optimization problem into two parts. This is the information from measurement, which means that now in this case we, we don't know the we, we don't know the entries of this matrix, the multiplication of this matrix, and we can use a maximum matrix to map this matrix into a measurement space and then find the and then to check the measurements uh, error. And they also uh, as some another part which which uh, export the information from observed values, which means that if there is some uh, inflow and outflow at the edge of the 
network, we can directly observe the OD flow. In this case, we can use this another side information. And they also uh, do some uh, comparison with this uh, on, on this problem. And the the proposed method combined with Tomo is um, uh, have a best performance. This this method means that the it is from another paper which they use regularization using KL divergence between gravity model and measurements to do the regularization. And there is a further application on prediction and the date and the input data is is from is the information 24 hours ago. And they also do some anomaly de detection. And for the SVD and SIMF, they compare result with the actual traffic. And then if there is a large difference between the recovery result and the actual uh, observed result, that, uh, that means that there will be anomalies. And the uh, other method to detect the anomaly is the depth different differencing, which means that uh, the we, 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 when we do the first order difference, we can directly highlight the sparks on temporal dimension, and they and, and they detect the anomaly uh, in in different an anomaly size. The anomaly size is actually a spike size. They uh, randomly add on the on the original data with some noise. The noise, the value of the noise is. Uh, regarded as a spark size, and when the spark size is very small, uh, which means that uh, that the noise is very very small, then the the all of the three method cannot detect the anomaly very uh, successfully. But if there is a larger anomaly size, the proposed method will be better. But we it also pointed out that if the if the noise is much larger, then the SVD will fail to distinguish the anomaly. Anomaly, but the SIMF, the proposed method, still uh, presents a stable performance. Thank you for listening.